Hi there, my name is Carrie Slater and I am the Silage Technical Manager for Bravant Seeds for the state of Wisconsin. And I want to take a few moments today to take a look at the Silage Profitability Calculator and um, show you some updates that have been made uh, within that Profitability Calculator. And hopefully it will help you um, get through some of the numbers um, that maybe historically have been numbers that you didn't really know for sure what to be adding and and how to um, how to know you know anything about a ration when you're when you're not a nutritionist. So that's the goal um, of these updates and I'll get into it right now so we can take a look at things. So here is the new um, updated BMR profitability calculator. And there is a new first page, it's the calculator instructions. And it's really just meant to kind of overview of the changes that have been made and, and where you're able to use the new page, the new corn calculator tab, and pull those numbers into the BMR advanced profitability tab that has historically been the one you guys have used. So if we go to the ration corn calculator tab, um, you'll see these colored cells and then you see the gray cells. And the reason that I put this together, um, we all know that historically there's been um, often some fairly significant differences that we see between starch uh, when it comes to dual purpose and BMR. And over the years, we've made some big changes, um, obviously with the new Bavalta line. Um, our starch level differences between BMR and dual purpose are very much narrowing. So I don't want um, anyone to you know, think that it's always the case that the dual purpose is going to be a, a better option as far as starch. But I also want to make sure that people realize that it's not starch alone that uh, determines the profitability of BMR. It is very much the fiber digestibility side. And when we're able to feed a highly digestible fiber, we're able to feed more of it and get more energy out of it. So that has always been the advantage of BMR. We're able to feed more of that uh, corn silage than we would of the dual purpose, which is less digestible. And when doing so, um, we actually bring in more starch into the ration, um, oftentimes even with a, a fairly significant difference between the dual purpose starch level and the BMR starch level. So we're going to walk through this and, and talk about some different things that um, I've, I've designed this to kind of try to put the some bumpers on, if you will, to keep you keep you in the center of the lane um, a little bit easier, even without knowing a lot about dairy nutrition, because obviously that's not your job. Um, so I want to help kind of guide you through some of those conversations with your dairy customers. So if you click on the first cell up here, uh, dry matter intake, uh, nutritionists and dairy farmers often talk in terms of dry matter intake for their cows. And um, then we have to translate that back to as fed numbers, um, what's actually coming out of the fields, what's actually coming out of the bunkers. So in this case, we're gonna set up the, the um, dry matter intake for 56 pounds. And you can see this note that pops up that gives you a range. And you have to type in a range within that number and everything's fine. If you were to go outside of that range, so my upper limit here, um, the range is 45 to 65. If I were to type in 66 pounds, it's going to give me an error. So we're going to retry. Um, we're going to go in at 56 pounds and everything's good to go. Herd size, I do not have that restricted at all. Um, you know, a lot of times people, will, if they're not real sure on the herd size, they'll put things in terms of hundreds um, or thousands just to make it easier uh, with math then. But um, we'll change this to 500 cows in this case. Ground corn price. So this is going to be um, in reference to if the farm was purchasing their ground corn, what would the price be? Um, you can also get a value from the, the customer if they have corn and grain bank and what kind of value they've placed on it. Um, in order to get that ground corn price number, a current number, it's very easy to, to reach out to um, the nutrition side of, of your, um, of your co-op. Um, or to the nutritionists themselves and get a number. So recent numbers have been around that 270 to 280. So we're gonna put 275 in here in this case. Now, this is where it gets a little confusing. If you're not um, a nutritionist, obviously, you don't know for sure what numbers to even begin putting in these ration um, slots here. 
So in this case, these burgundy line of cells is the dual purpose ration. And this first cell over here, which currently says 30, is the dry matter uh, as dual purpose corn silage in the total ration. So it's the percentage of dry matter. So um, typically speaking, uh, a dual purpose, it's going to be pretty difficult to feed uh, a dual purpose beyond about 35 to 40% of the total diet. It may get as close to 45, but again, that's a that's gonna be a, a pretty um, unique situation where the fiber digestibility is high enough to, to feed it at that high of a level. So we'll change this to 35%. And when we do that, when we tab over, we can see that this as fed number changed to 56. So if the, um, percentage of the diet is 35%. That's 35% of the total diet of 56 per, of pounds. Um, and it just so happens that 35% of 56 is also 56 pounds as fed. Um, if we change that to 34, just to make it a little bit, uh, show there's a difference there. 34% um, is sitting at 54.4% pounds, excuse me. Um, again, that's 54.4 pounds as fed of the corn silage. Um, so we'll leave that at 34%. Uh, this number, this 54.4, you're going to want to jot that down so you remember it when you switch to the next page because that's going to be a, a tidbit of information that's you're going to pull from this ration corn calculator tab into the BMR advanced profitability tab. So now when we get that sample back from the lab that shows um, the various percentages and, and numbers on it from that sample. We'll look to see what the total starch percentage of that corn silage was. And um, for example, we're gonna put in 30, maybe it was a really, really good year, 37%. So 37% of that corn silage, that dual purpose corn silage is starch. Uh, when we tab over then, um, you can see this number down here changed. And our target number for the ration, again, a number that most people outside of the nutrition world are really not going to have a good grasp on. And that's why I wanted to make it so that you, you knew kind of a, a range to pick in. Um, they're going to be similar between the dual purpose and the BMR. A lot of times um, we would have to push the dual purpose a little higher, but that doesn't mean they always have to be, uh, the dual purpose always has to be higher than the BMR. Starch, if you remember, is going to be one of your most economical energy sources. And that's the biggest reason that we try to maximize this number. Um, however, the cow can only tolerate a certain amount um, within her rumen before she ends up with issues and uh, pretty significant health problems if we start pushing this beyond that 29 to 30%. So in this case, we're going to leave it at 29% of the ration. If we jump down here to the BMR ration portion. Um, in this case, we have a the dry, the percentage of dry matter, just like we did before, but this time it's of the BMR, corn silage that's going into the total ration. So again, we've got this range down here that we've limited it to. And we're gonna say in this case, it's gonna be 49% of the ration is coming in as BMR. So then we'll make a note here of that 78.4, bring that over to the next page. In this case, um, we're gonna say that it was 31% starch. So you know, oftentimes I think this would be a number that um, these these differences here would be numbers that are, are very reasonable. Um, we very much can see a tighter window though with our, especially with our new Bavalta lineup, we're seeing this range, um, the, the BMRs are are playing in that same, same uh, number here um, into the high 30s, even 40% in some cases. So then we look at the, the BMR ration. And again, that's the total starch in that BMR ration. Um, so we're gonna say that it's, uh, we're gonna go with 29% and keep them the same just for um, example purposes here. So then if we scroll down to this gray box, this first one is the total pounds of ground corn that we're adding to that dual purpose diet. Um, in order to hit that 29% target in the total diet. So in this case, we've, we're at 12.3 pounds of ground corn. And 
likewise, this is the BMR uh, example. So in this case, um, we're, we have to add another 10.3 pounds of ground corn to that ration to hit that 29% starch target. So again, based on the numbers, um, based on the cost of things, we're looking at a 27% or 27 cent difference um, between the starch coming from the corn coming from um, the dual purpose diet and the corn in the BMR diet. So that's just a portion of, of our, you know, uh, savings or advantage of using the BMR. So now if we jump over to this profitability tab, and it's going to be um, pretty much the same profitability calculator that you've had in the past. We'll change this to that 500 cows like we had on the previous page. Uh, we're gonna leave the, the mailbox price here at $24 per hundred. In this case, we're gonna say, you know what? Nutritionist is a really good nutritionist and he's got able to get those dual purpose numbers and BMR numbers um, a little bit closer as far as the output. So we're gonna say, you know what? It's 3.5 um, instead of the, the 4.5 or five pounds that um, we know is very much uh, possible. But we'll tighten that up a little bit for example purposes here. Um, when we calculated the corn silage that was fed in the competitor, the, the dual purpose tab, um, if we remember from the first page, it was 54.4 pounds. And then the BMR we had in at 78.4 pounds. I'll make those changes. And then we come down here to the grain, um, the corn grain that's being added. And if you remember again, it's 12.3 and 10.3. And then the tonnage, these we get into numbers that you guys are a little bit more familiar with. Um, so the yields per acre, again, um, you can put in whatever you feel is, is right for your area or your producer that you're working with. So in this case, we're gonna say that the dual purpose is gonna result in about 24 ton per acre. And we're gonna say um, that the BMR uh, is gonna be 22.5 ton per acre. So now the corn seed price, um, 270, I think 270 or 275 is probably a pretty good number, 335. Let's, let's leave it at 335 um, population. Plant populations, 32,000 on the dual purpose. We've got 31,000 on the BMR. Again, numbers that you are much more familiar with and have a better idea of what to recommend on those numbers. Um, prices then for expenses on production of that corn silage. So these are going to be the other uh, the other inputs, your chems, your fertilizers, and so forth. Um, I left them the same from the dual purpose to the BMR just because I know um, we've really started to push fungicide on, on all of our corn silage acres and all of our corn in general. So I don't know that there'd be a big difference between these two. You can obviously change that if you see that's fit. Um, and then our corn, ground corn prices, again, pull that over from the page before. So now with that 500 cow dairy, again, this is the, the same tab that you've been used to, um, but uh, able to pull some of those numbers in from that corn calculator tab a little bit easier. You can feel maybe a little bit more confident on, on some of the numbers that you've picked um, as far as the ration numbers. So in this case, we're looking at uh, almost $100,000 uh, net income for, again, using the, the Bravant BMR. If you've got any questions on this calculator or um, how to address other BMR nutrition conversations on the farm, by all means, feel free to reach out. Again, Carrie Slater, Silage Technical Manager for Bravant Seeds, cover the state of Wisconsin. Thank you.